it's time to get wild, baby. <laughs> oh, man. I needed an intro for this, but I wasn't expecting that to be the thing that goes from brain to mouth to microphone. But, yo, you know who it is. It's the one and the only, the triple, the G-O-D. And, of course, I'd like to welcome you guys back to another installment of Triple the Guy Speaks on Yo, Power Rangers Dino Charge, man. Hey. The simple, the, the, the TLDR of the video before we get into it is, I enjoy myself. In comparison to other things that I will do the best I can not to stray off and speak of, but I know me, I'm going to get to it at some point. But given where we've gone so far and given a little taste that we got a ninja steel is that there's hope for the future because Dino Charge did his damn thing. And I'm going to tell you why from my point of view, from a point of view of a fan who sits in the state that I sit in, let me tell you this. Watching Dino Charge gave me an appreciation for Koryuja that I didn't have. Not to say, because I have said this glaringly on a whole bunch of videos, that Koryuja is my mother in jam. Let me let you know, Koryuja goes dumb, and if you ain't watched it, you really should take some time out of your schedule, especially with the holidays coming up and you got some free time, watch Koryuja. Show's amazing. The last time I felt like this was the first time I watched Deck Ranger. The first time I've watched Deck Ranger, because I'm going to say a lot, I have watched Deck Ranger more than once, is when the first time I watched Deck Ranger, though, I had an appreciation for SPD that I didn't even know I had because it was already, SPD was already my jam. That was already my jam. And, and, and still is one of my favorite Power Rangers adaptations thus far. But watching Decker Ranger gave me an appreciation for SPD because of how wonderful SPD was. That being able to look at what it was based on and it just had me like, Y'all, that's how you do that. And walking out of Dino Charge, for the most part, gave me that same feeling of, there you go. That It gave me that feeling. And, and as a fan who, who engages with both Sentai and Power Rangers, and having that to go on, is that's how you that's as a fan like me, that's how you want to feel coming out of something that you are you already had love for the original. But this adaptation is, yeah, it's doing a lot of stuff that the original did. And it's taking stuff from the original and flipping it and then doing its own thing. And you and when you walk out of a show and you can appreciate all three of those facets of what an adaptation can do, the show has done its job. Is that the grandest example, and the one example I will give, is Coda. Coda is the grandest example of how to do an adaptation correctly. For those who don't know, and just a little Koryuja in here, Coda's, Coda's counterpart in Koryuja is a character named Noble Haru Udo, or officially known to all of his friends, and no son. No son was an old man, and he did a whole bunch of old man stuff, including DDT and suplexing people, because that shit's amazing. The thing is, you take a character like that and let the character be the basis of that the character that we're adapting for for this American artist in Japan is an old man. How do we flip that for our best use and our adaptation? You make the character a, a time-displaced caveman. So you still keep the old man element. You bring something fresh to the adaptation and it makes sense for the narrative that you are trying to tell. There are many little bright spots in Dino Charge where they take what Koryuja did and flip it in a way they just had you just nod your head and agree like, I see you. That is what a show should do. That is what a show should do. It's like, Dino Charge, it's like, after, okay, let me get my word for this. 
let let me find the most non way to not say the word fuck repeatedly when I do this. After the disaster, underline the word disaster. That was super mega force. After that disaster, and I will use that word again, it's kind of like, I was willing to because I have learned my lesson as someone who is not only a student but a teacher. I was going to give Dino Charge a first shot regardless. Because I gave Dino Charge that first shot, we here right now with me having an appreciation for the adaptation for a show in Koyuja that I love to death. That's what it is. It's like, I will say this, on that flip side of the coin, it was a whole bunch of stuff weirdly and supercharged that I just plainly was just kind of like, huh. So let's go over Triple the G's huh list for Dino, for Dino Supercharge. One, if the show was ultimately going to introduce Zenoe, which is of course the counterpart to Court you just godlike mentor and Torrin because that is my dude Torrin Beast Mode. Why introduce Keeper in the first place? The same goes for Chaos and Sledge is that if you knew ultimately but see the thing was when it comes to both of those examples when, when it was just Dino Charge, before Dino Super Charge or the character being introduced, I understood for the sake of the narrative, for the sake of adapting the show, for the sake of the show period and the sake of filming the show and all the stuff that has to go to bringing you an adaptation of your TV show, why you would make replacements like that. But then to introduce Zen away and then to introduce Chaos like that in a weird way and then just like, have Chaos as a 3-4 episode throwaway villain that don't really do nothing for real. And just have Zeno Wing there for the sake thereof. And then Zeno Wing could have been a mentor the whole time. But see, and I'm not trying to get into that because, see, this is one of those points where instead of saying something that I shouldn't, the answer to that should be, why triple the G.O.D. saying if Torn is that monstrous god? Because you should go watch Corey Uja. That's the answer. That's the answer I'm going to give. Anytime I want to say something about Koryuja that may be a spoiler or anything, that's just go watch the show. That's how I'm going to try to keep myself in line for the rest of this. Is that speaking of stuff weirdly in Dino Charge, speaking of speaking of Zeno Wing, the whole Trinity Strazor shit, because that was another thing that at the beginning, especially... Given what Dino Shark was in there in the beginning with Riley, you know, being a fixing dude or whatever, which they really didn't pay that much attention to for real, was he did that one off Trinity Strays off. Again, this is another instance where I will interrupt myself and say, go watch Corey Eugen. Because I was about to say something that maybe I shouldn't. Go watch Corey Eugen. That's it. Go watch Corey Eugen because. You want to understand why I'm sitting up here tripping off of a of a sword slashing triangle? Go watch Koryujin. The other thing, I don't know what was up with my dude. I don't know. That was a heel face, heel face, face, heel face, heel, heel face, face, heel face turn. I don't know what was up with that guy. He was all over the map. Decent villain. Decent villain, but all over the map with it. That whole Sentai 6 thing, that's another question. Another thing that we will never ever talk about again. My thing was, is that the reason why this review is two weeks damn late was because I waited on that damn Christmas special thinking that maybe, maybe the show might show me some love, do me some justice and, and be like, yo, maybe... We can do something with this heckle, that Yuga thing, something, anything doing with that. Create the Zord to use, have plenty of opportunity story-wise to give heckle a dino charger so he could turn into the Spine Ranger or whatever the hell they call it in, in dino charge for a damn toy, but they did nothing. That was the thing that kind of, 
I don't even, I don't want to say the word piss me off, but it kind of like that was kind of like a missed opportunity to do something hot with that. That was a missed opportunity to do something hot with the character heckle using the death using the death Yuga suit. But if I remember correctly, I remember in one of the early episodes, Death Yuga was actually locked up in one of Sledge's cages, if I'm not mistaken. So eh? We'll just go with that. The other, I don't even want, because when I think about it in context, it's not much of a problem. Is that, whose idea for the ending was that, is my question. Because given how little impact that actually had on the story itself, but the impact that I think it was supposed to have was maybe lost on me. That I don't want to spoil the ending for a Dino Charge, but that ending kind of put me in a place where I was just kind of like, huh? Like, I get why you would do that for the sake of the narrative, but then not being able to ever get any real payoff, and that includes the Christmas special that I watched for no good reason, that I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's better that I don't. That ending was a little too much for me. That's just me. That's just me speaking. That ending was a little much. Regardless of that. This was a great adaptation of a wonderful Sentai which you should watch. If you watch, if you listening to this and you ain't watched Dino Charge yet, you should do that. If you really ain't got nothing to do or just you need something to do over this holiday break, go watch Koryuji, dog. That show is amazing. It is still one of my favorite Sentai's. And I mentioned my favorite Sentai at the beginning of this video. That Sentai is called Tokuso Sentai Deca Ranger. Another conversation. The thing is, is that with Ninja still coming up, Here's the question I have. Where where are we going from here? Because we talk, I talked about for two seconds where we've been, but let's just take a recap really quickly with where the Neo Saban era is and where it's been and where I think it might be able to go. Because I think that's a, a, a proper way to wrap this up. You asked Samurai, and I'm like... The Clash of the Red Ranger shit was dumb. You can excuse it shitting on SPD. I, I like, I can excuse that too because they ignored what Disney tried to do with RPM, and I'm just like, okay, fine, whatever. Samurai was an eye show, and this is from a show that people were unsure back then that before. Saban got that got their hand back on the franchise that Disney was even going to make an attempt to try to do. Because, you know, we had that weird season of Power Rangers, and I just did quote fingers because it was a weird season of Power Rangers that they tried to make Zack act like black or something. It was weird, but Samurai was alright. Samurai was okay. I will even go as far as to say this. Megaforce was okay. And this is okay in comparison to what I say a video game is playable. Because Megaforce was okay. It was okay. Even given that that show was going to be all over the place. From the jump, and I knew it because of what they were trying to do, it was okay. I said this, and I'll say it again. Super Mega Force was a fucking disaster. It was a fucking disaster. Disaster, disaster, disaster. Is that when we as fans have to look back on the history of this franchise that so many people love. 
that the way that we celebrated the franchise being 20 years old was a lackluster season with a finale that was ass that the replay of the finale kind of not fixed but fixed the problems that the finale was supposed to bring and the word that I remember using on my blog when I described Super Mega Force was the was the phrase, and I quote, lack of emotional impact and content. I feel better that I said that. Dino Charge is a shining example of what I hope Ninja Steel can be. Is that just to play devil's advocate, I guess, with this, is we needed that we needed Samurai to be what it was. We needed Megaforce and Super Megaforce to be the dumpster fires that they are so that we get something great and Dino Charge to appreciate. That it gives me hope that Ninja still going to be that crack, but here's the question that I do have. Is that I wonder, are we finally finna get back to team-ups again? Because... With Saban picking and choosing what they want to adapt because, again, I got the floor. I'll get into this. Goldbusters was like the underhanded pitch of the fucking century. And it's like, nope. Even with Goldbusters being a wink and a nudge of celebrating 20 years of the Power Rangers franchise, No. It was a shame that Dino Charge didn't do nothing with the alleged rumors that they were going to do something with GoBusters because doing something with GoBusters could have been hot. Doing something with whatever GoBusters could have been, I'm like, it just felt like to me for real that GoBusters was this underhanded pitch that nobody swung at because whatever. And let's just be for real. I don't know if anybody will want the logistical nightmare of trying to adapt Tokuja. As amazing as it is, especially when it gets to the point that it gets to where the show flips the game, is that that would be hard to adapt for American artists. And I and I'm I'm a realist enough to admit that. I'm realist enough to admit that I don't know who would go through the trouble. So that would be another thing to say that you know, if you got some time, maybe watch OQ. It ain't the best Sentai, it ain't the worst. It's a good one. It's a good one to watch, especially if you're willing to wait for the twist for it to get really good. It, I, I I love watching it every week. Just like just like the streets give Go Busters shit, but Go Busters is my jam though. You know what I'm saying? Go Busters is my jam. It's like a whole bunch of Japanese kids who don't buy toys, the numbers that, you know, that toy looks at completely and utterly disagree with me about my thoughts on how I think that Goldbusters was amazing and this is including into being a god. That includes Jen and BJ Stagg being a swagbusters and all of that. Goldbusters is great and I really think that we could have used an adaptation of that. That would have been cool. My thing is this. The reason why we just went through the history of the Neo Sabai era was because Ninja Steel is next. And given how how really good and how much I enjoy watching the Ninja is that this should be something to really see. Which then makes me break the question is or are they going to or they going to adapt Zoogenes? Because I really think that's another one that, you know, that just seemed like the thing you do. You know what I'm saying? You adapt Zoogen. I think the next, I think the next Sentai is about space. I think it's called like Uchu Sentai something, something. I could Google it, but actually I'm Googling it now. I am now Googling what is the next Sentai because, you know, that just seems like a thing. That I should do right now because it's what I do as a gag on these things. It's Google stuff. 
So let us find out. Okay, no. Okay, let's go. Uchu Sentai Q Ranger. There are things about what this is going to do that I appreciate that we can't get into now. They're for real, straight up. There are things that are going to be done and are going to happen that have to do with this Sentai that has nothing to do with this Sentai and everything to do with this Sentai that is going to be dumb because they involve stuff that I love and have re-fallen in love with over the years because, you know, that just happens. So, all in all, I have lost the complete point of whatever this was because we was talking about Dino Charge and we on Q-Ranger right now. And I understand why, but I don't. So, we shall see. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Triple the Guy Speaks On, man. Thank you, Donald Charge, for entertaining me. I appreciate it. I know fans appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I know I hope... Hope kids went out and bought the toys, you know, because that's important. Because as long as you out there buying toys, I get a show to watch. So, it's cool. Speaking of toys, but that's another conversation. We'll get into that another time. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get out of here. Because I got to go. I got stuff to do. Got to turn this into a video. Stuff like that. So, with that being said. I am, of course, the one and the only, the Triple the G-O-D. I'd like to thank you for joining me for another episode of Triple the Guy Speaks Song. And with that, may the power protect you. <laughs>